So how's Lent coming? Oh, laughter, <laughs> right? As you know, we're doing Lent differently this year, and I talked about not necessarily giving something up, but doing something with all your heart, and that is our theme this Lent, doing with all your heart the gifts and talents that God has given you to build up the body of Christ, and actually do something instead of giving something up, and many of you, as you can see, even our little ones have placed hearts on the cross and nailed them to the cross. Lent is about transformation. You're going to be sick of me saying this, just as you're going to be sick of me saying bridegroom for Advent. Lent is about transformation. You should get to Easter a substantially different Christian than you began in Ash Wednesday. You should be transformed and transfigured as you get closer to the Lord during these 40 great days and you rise with him to new life on Easter Sunday. Go to the first reading. Go to the first reading. The first reading gets kind of gross. There's dead birds and things, but let's get to the bottom of it. Because what you're going to see as we tease out Lent, as we keep going deeper into Lent, you're going to hear things that the Lord is saying to us to help us transform. And so we come to a character named Abraham. And this was even before he was Abraham. It's Abram. Look at that first sentence. The word of the Lord came to Abraham. Do not be afraid. I, the Lord God, am your shield and your reward. What was he scared of? This is, where, this is where I wish the readings were a little longer, right? Because it doesn't make sense to jump right into, do not be afraid. That's verse 15 of Genesis. Verse 14 is where all the nitty gritty stuff happens. Verse, chapter 14 reads like a scene on the Book of Thrones, the Game of Thrones, okay? It opens up with these battling kings. These five kings under the leadership of the king of Elam... ...start battling other kings. And there's a huge battle. And the group of five kings... ...led by the king of Elam... ...comes and sacks some other kings... ...including the king of Sodom. Sacks them all. Goes into Sodom... ...and almost destroys the city. Captures all of its inhabitants... ...captures all of its wealth and loot... ...and captures... ...Abraham's nephew... ...Lot... That may ring a bell, right? Lot gets captured by these kings. Word gets back to Abraham. He goes in the middle of the night with about 300 people. And they separate and they conquer this group of five kings. 300 people in Abraham destroy these great armies. That's in the first half of the chapter. Then all of a sudden this weird king shows up named Melchizedek. ...known as the king of Salem. That's where we get Jeru Salem from. And he is a priest of the Most High... ...and he offers a sacrifice of bread and wine. Wink, wink, nod, nod. That's going to point us to something down the pike. Abraham is even more filled with the presence of the Lord. And it ends by the king of Sodom coming to Abraham and saying... ...listen, just give me the people but take all the loot. You can have all the loot for what you did. You saved my neck. You take all the money. And Abraham looks at him and says, no, because I don't want you going around saying to people that you made me rich. Because it's God who's given me the grace. All of that's in 14. And then we have, do not be afraid, Abraham. What was he scared of? He conquered an army, saved his nephew, received a sacrifice from Melchizedek, and then tells off the king of Sodom. Why is he scared? If you notice in that verse, it happens at night. Because eventually the Lord drags Abraham out of his tent and tells him to look up to the stars. So you know it's in the night. Abraham didn't have a good night. Abraham is tossing and turning. Why? Because he allowed himself to become fearful. He did something great. He stopped an injustice. He saved his nephew Lot. He stands up to the king of Sodom to say, no, the Lord God will provide for me, not you. And now he's second guessing himself. And there's doubt. And there's fear. And it's almost enslaving him. So much so that for the first time in scripture, the Lord says to someone, 
do not be afraid. God will say do not be afraid 88 times throughout scripture to people who are freaking out over something God has told them to do. Be not afraid. I will be your shield. You don't got to worry about those kings coming back to get you. I'm going to defend you. You did the right thing in telling the king of Sodom to keep his money. I will be your great reward. That's why the Lord says I'll be your shield and your reward. I'm not giving you this great job to do, Abraham, without giving you the grace to do it. Don't be afraid. Now you're probably looking at me going, what in the world does this have to do with me, Father Jason? Well, first of all, if you plan on conquering an army of five kings, please talk with me. That's probably something we should chat about. We should also probably let the authorities know you're going to do something like that. Right? My gut tells me God is not asking you to conquer five kings. And probably tell off another king. Some of you may want to tell off some kings. But I know he's given you something to do during Lent. I know he's given you a task. You may be looking at what Christ is asking you to do with the same fear that Abraham was. Well, I don't know if I did the right thing. Should I have really chosen that to do during Lent? I mean, I was good for about five days, but it's been a while. I don't know, God. I'm not the right person for this job. I know I said yes to it, but yeah, I don't know. Ever been there? You may be there right now. This homily may be directed towards you. Look at how we as Christians allow fear and self-doubt to enslave us and to roll into our hearts. All the time it seems to happen. And then God has to say to us, be not afraid. I got your back. I wouldn't tell you you can do these things without giving you the grace to do them. I wouldn't tell you this is your chosen vocation and without giving you the grace to do it. Don't be afraid. I will be your shield. I will go out and defend you. I will be your reward. I will give you the strength that you need to do the task I've given you to do. Part of being transformed in Lent is giving up the fear and the self-doubt. Because I bet you in the quiet of your heart, if you look this week at the many ways you're frightened and you're self-doubting, it's going to be a lot. Because we do it to ourselves all the time. And God is on the other hand saying, knock it off. <laughs> I got you. Jesus uses that beautiful image in the gospel as a mother hen gathers over the brood. A hen does that to protect the young. God is here to protect us. But also a hen does that to hatch the eggs. Christ wants you to be hatched. He wants you to have a new life. He wants you to be reborn during this Lent. And so whatever he's giving you to do with all of your heart, do it. Don't be afraid of it. Don't second guess yourself. We need to be like Abraham. Because then all of a sudden, what does God say? Abraham, come outside. Take a look at the stars. That's going to be the number of your offspring. You are those stars. We are all our descendants of Abraham. You're the fulfillment of this scripture passage. Look what God can do. You may not be of the genetic makeup of Abraham, but you got his faith. And that's why we're his children. Look what God can do if you step out in faith. So, week two of Lent. Last week we learned about Jesus as our victor. Today, Jesus is our shield and our reward. Don't be afraid. God may be calling you to great things that only you can do for the betterment of this church and New Albany and the world. He needs you not to be afraid. He needs you not to be in self-doubt. He needs you out there like Abraham to say yes. Do not be afraid. Our Lord is our shield and our great reward.